Then I woke up again. My breathing couldn't settle down. It felt like I was robbed of all of my air. Then the pain started rushing through my body once again. With that pain came the mother of all migraines. I turned to see my clock. It was an hour past midnight. I figured I must have fallen asleep a short time after I got home. The clock changed as it had for the past week. Almost two days left on the countdown. I turned on the lamp beside the clock when it changed back. There was no possible way I was getting any more sleep that night. I noticed that I had fallen asleep with that book I found in the library. I opened it out of futile interest and flipped through the pages. Nothing, just like before. Pages were flipped until I reached the ending note on the author. My eyes flickered with renewed hope. Amazingly, the author lived in this town. And he lived fairly close to the school. Life gave me a lucky break for once. I put the book away, and since I wasn't going to do any more sleeping, I got to work on my essay. I turned on the television to help me keep awake and calm my nerves. Once the screen appeared, my eyes radiated with fear. The news had a helicopter in the sky and was reporting on a police chase near mine and my mother's favorite shopping district. There was one oddity present that the news crew did not seem to notice. The big overpass was missing. It wasn't like in my dream where there was debris and people dying. There was just nothing. It was almost like the overpass never even existed. It was clear to me now. I desperately needed to find the author of that book. That day, after high school had let out, I ran to where that author lived. It was cold, though. I really wished I could have found my jacket. The author's house was relatively close by, but I hoped and prayed he hadn't moved away. It didn't take more than a few minutes to find it. The home was small, but quaint. I approached the door and knocked anxiously. Several minutes passed by with my nervousness increased. I almost gave up and began to leave when the door opened. Who is it? A tanned, clean-shaven man asked. I tried to keep from looking like an ordinary solicitor. Hello, I'm sorry for disturbing you, but are you Ralph James Patterson? My friends call me R.J. He nodded. Okay, R.J. I'm not your friend, so don't call me R.J. I don't know how, but this conversation quickly became very awkward. Who are you and what do you want? I cleared my throat to try again. Well, my name is Chase Ward, and I found this book in my school library. He glanced at it and back to me. What are you, a fan or something? Not really, I denied. I just wanted to ask you a question about it. Like what? Well, this is going to sound silly, I know, but it is the truth. You see, I have been having nightmares for about a month now. Kid, I'm not a sleep doctor. He almost closed the door, but I put my foot in the way. I know, just wait a minute, it's this. I shoved the book in his face to show the image on the page. I pointed at it and he stopped moving. It's this creature. I've recently been seeing something like this in my dreams. Before I could say any more, he finished my next sentence. And you die in every dream. He looked dazed and terror-stricken. Come inside. Inside his home, I sat on the sofa while he sat in his couch across from me. He offered me tea, but I refused. I never really liked the stuff. Tell me, how long has this been going on? Almost a month now. Has the clock started? I was flabbergasted. I'm sure my mouth was hanging open. You know about that? How? The man sighed and looked almost depressed. Because when I was in your age, I went through the same kind of nightmare. I was speechless. I had been dealing with this phenomenon for what felt like ages, and then I come to find that I was not alone in my terror. As terrible as it was overall, I was glad to know that I wasn't alone. So what do I do? What is the countdown on the clock for? Well, first off, there isn't much you can do. When this happened to me, I never really got a good view of what it was that was causing all these disasters. There was always too much fog, so I only ever managed to get a view of its claws and its eyes. He paused for a moment before saying, I call it Cosmogog. I like the ring to the name. Now the countdown is a timer. Not just to another disaster, but one where thousands upon thousands of lives are at stake. 
The countdown exists just to tell you how long you have to stop it, I think. I was almost afraid to ask, what do you mean by, I think? This author had my full, undivided attention. What happened? I failed. For a moment, I thought I saw tears form in his eyes. Two thousand people died because I was too weak and too afraid to stop it. Most people would be, I suppose. You die in the dream, but as long as your real body isn't where it attacks, you will continue to live, albeit with the pain that comes with it. The hope in my eyes seemed to dissolve. And do you know what the worst part of this whole thing is? Have you noticed what happens after all these disasters? I raised my head up again to listen intently for what might be the most important information I get out of this visit. After every strike, the place of the attack vanishes and the people who die vanish as well, along with their memories of their existence. To die is one thing, but to also be erased from existence is quite another. The only ones who can remember and grieve are people like you and me. Was that food for thought? He gave me his cell phone number when I left his house, just in case I ever needed to call him about something. When I left Mr. Patterson's house, an uneasy and sickly feeling settled in my stomach. Before I left, I did ask if there was anything I can do. He said the only way to stop it that he knew of was just to fight it. The author also warned me, whatever I do in the next couple of days, to not go to sleep during twilight. I didn't ask why. I was too beside myself with terror because of this living nightmare. My mind slid back to the countdown. A great disaster was coming once that clock reaches zero. Then it hit me. It was the concert. There was going to be thousands at that concert. And that thing was going to kill them all. And me with them. I had to think fast and prepare. If at all possible. I researched all over the internet for any information I could use against the creature. I did manage to uncover records of others who have had the same experience as me. They all shared something else in common. They all had failed to stop the creature's attack. These people even had their own forms. I started posting questions to see if I can get any supporting information. Anything would have helped at this point. The amount of support and feedback I was getting was torrential. It looked like Everyone was flocking to my aid to help me. They all wanted this demon dead. With this many people here, it did make me wonder why no one would publicly come forward about all of this. They would have been committed to an asylum, I thought to myself. The internet was a safer place to voice this stuff without being labeled as crazy or insane. I did get one major answer to one of my questions. One anonymous person said that when he went into the dream world, he was wearing a jacket with lavender and gold. Wearing the jacket in the creature's presence had weakened it. There were a few others reporting the same strange occurrence. They were all wishing me good luck and finally putting a stop to Cosmogog with hope for me finally finishing their work. It was getting late, and I knew I would need some rest for the coming day, so I went to bed once twilight had passed. This time, I found myself in a restroom. I was probably in a restaurant or a mall, judging by the stall I was in. Opening the stall door, I looked around to see if anyone was around. I about walked out when the mirror caught my eye. I was wearing my missing jacket again. I wondered why it was always this jacket and no other kind. I pulled my eyes away from the mirror and went out of the restroom to see if I could get the people out to safety. It was going to come. I could already feel the cold thick in the air. Once outside the restroom door, my voice caught itself. Sitting over in a booth with several people by him was my father. Dad? I whispered to myself. Then I hollered it out a second time to get his attention. Dad! My father recognized my voice and was shocked to see me here of all places, and at this time of night no less. Dad, we need to get out of here. My dad's acquaintances were just as confused as everyone else watching. Whoa, Chase. What's going on? Why are you here? Where is your... My father paused mid-sentence when he noticed what I was wearing. Not again, he whispered to himself grimly. Without me saying anything more, it looked like he understood perfectly what was going on. That scared me more than anything else thus far. Without another moment of hesitation, my father gave me the most serious look he had ever given to me. How much time is left on the countdown? Less than a day, but Dad... Chase, listen to me. 
he interrupted. Will you wake up, go to my study, and open the top right drawer of my desk? It's locked, and the key is hidden underneath the rug. You'll find a journal. Read everything. You hear me? I nodded. All right, we need to get everyone out. Before he could finish, it was already too late. The fog had already covered the building from the outside. A clawed hand burst through the brick walls, smashing people inside. Some people made it out of the building without getting killed, including Dad's friends. Then part of the ceiling collapsed, blocking the only way out of the small restaurant. The claw went at us. My dad stood in front of me and held out his hand. A lilac force field appeared in front of him, bouncing back the creature's attack. Shocked wasn't the word for me. I was mystified. My dad turned back to me and spoke fast. Chase, I know this is too much to ask for, and I know this isn't fair of me to ask you to do this. Please, Chase, stop it from killing any more people. Just as he was finishing his sentence, a spark of flames materialized from the claw and was directed at us, engulfing us in a searing cold blaze.